In my world, power, hunger, strength, and living forever is everything. Everything you want. That's why we all caved in. When monsters circled the world and came about right in front of us, we all caved in. We all became vampires, werewolves, anything you can think of, we became. Me? Now Fumi Iwatani. I'm a vampire, but it's not just that. I'm one of the strongest vampires in my world, arguably the strongest, and I dominate half of my region. Yeah, we kind of have these rules around here, certain rules. You don't cross the borders, you don't take over other people's regions, that's how we don't, you could say, start another world war. But frankly, I've been craving it. I've been craving the blood. Craving the blood of my enemies. I just want one thing. I want death. I want to turn others like me. They could live forever if they just chose my path, but they refuse. There's a stigma around us. We can't be out in the sun. That we can't do this, we can't do that. It's all wrong. They don't know our power. We could take over everything. And one day, I decided we would. I lined up my army, thousands of vampires, ready to take over continent after continent, region after region. As we lined up ready to go, I was brought over the war plans. These war plans that were supposed to be perfect for us. But when I grabbed it and I began to read it, all the lettering, the wording, was gone. What the hell was happening? Am I, being, am I getting tricked? Is it some witches? Warlocks? What is it? I didn't know. But I did know right when everything began to change. You can say a yellow light began to emerge and surround me entirely. And that yellow light sent me away. And when I awakened, I looked to my left to see three other people. And that was a true change in my life that I was not expecting, even more than becoming a monster itself. Yo, what is good, everybody? It's your boy, Golden Gold, Falls Golden What If, whatever you want to call me, and I'm back. I am back with a brand new Nafumi What If. This is now, what if Nafumi was a legendary vampire hero? Got some comments on this, decided to do it. I have a little problem right now. It's like I have so many ideas that I don't know which one I should do first, which is a good problem to have, I guess. But um, I, I was kind of struggling with what I should do first. So I decided to do this. I don't know why. I have no explanation of why I decided this first. But that's where I am. But uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoy. I hope all y'all have an amazing day. And let's just get right into the what if. Let's get it. Yeah, I spawned here right in front of everyone else. The three people next to me all had different weapons. Now, Fumi was around the three cardinal heroes, one with a sword, one with a bow, and one with a spear. He himself had no weapon. It seemed like he crossed over without one. But once they arrived, the knights, in fact, they saw him and brought over many others, people of the church. Immediately, the church began to attack Nafumi. Nafumi, feeling that his power was nowhere near what it was in his world, he had to back up, try to avoid the attacks, and they pinned him down and restrained him. He questioned what the hell they think they're doing, but they say that he, he is a monster. They can all tell it, and it's pretty obvious that somehow the shield hero wasn't summoned, and they summoned this. This monster, a vampire. This is no good. He needs to go now. Now Fumi is chained up and taken away, he can't even break free, or at least he's trying to and feels that his power isn't at the strength that, he, that it was before. The other three heroes argue for a little second, a little bit, not very much at all, but they are shut down relatively quickly and they say that they'll give them extra money if they keep their mouth shut, in which they do, and they say that this man is not the hero that they should be fighting with, he's just a monster, a vampire in fact someone that will do unholy unspeakable things to them they take him away and begin to sentence naofumi to imprisonment forever naofumi is pissed about this what is even going on he went from ultimate power to this now this is bullshit. 
He doesn't even know what's going on, and they won't even tell him. They just call him a monster, a freak, and he doesn't know what to do. He sits there chained. Longer and longer, the time begins to pass. One day, two days, three days, a week. Time continues to pass, but now Fumi gets frustrated at this and feels that he has to do something. He has to find out if he can get out. Maybe his other powers work. No, they don't. I've tried everything. God damn it. What am I supposed to do? Now Fumi begins to think, but that's when he hears some clanging behind him. He turns and sees the bars that were pointing outside the window, and he looks out, but he doesn't see anything. He doesn't see anyone. What is even going on? What am I hearing? But again, someone actually perches up and begins to speak with Nafumi. Hey, hey, you over there. You. Uh, yeah? You, um, are you a demi-human? A demi-human? No, I mean, maybe? I don't even know. Well, I feel like you would know. Um, I heard they had a demi-human hostage here. I was gonna get you out. You're just a little kid. You can't get me out. There's no reason. Look, I I, I know, but still. I, I, I can. Trust me, okay? Uh, Alright, whatever you say. Now Fumi sits there and waits longer and longer for this demi-human to actually make a move. And eventually, the bars begin to slowly but surely get filed down. And they break free. Now Fumi squeaks his way through those bars and picks up the little, the little person and begins running off. But he looks to see that it's a little girl. A little girl with raccoon ears and a raccoon tail. And he just can, continues to run, not asking any more questions, and gets to a safe spot in the wilderness, asking her what is she even doing. Oh, um, you see, my name is um, Raftalia. I broke out of slavery recently, and I was looking for the shield hero. I heard he got summoned. But then I saw you, and I thought you were probably a demi-human. At least that's what it seemed like. Oh, I see. I don't know if I'm a demi-human kid. Not exactly, at least. I am a vampire, if you can see by my teeth. He shows his teeth, and she is in kind of awe. Oh, so you're like a, a beast man, a beast person. We have those people at, um, at, at, at our home as well. Or at least we did. What do you mean we did? They're dead, aren't they? She nods, extremely sad, as Nafumi says it's fine. That they're gonna get out of here, and they wanna find that he'll find the best place to go, at least for now. He's heard about the waves. As he says this, she kind of gets scared, but he tells her not to worry. That he got captured and put away right when he got summoned, so he wasn't able to get strong. But now he'll be able to get strong. He needs to just find a place that they can go. He doesn't know where, but he'll figure it out. She then begins to say that there are other places that have people like them, but she's not sure where they are. That they'll have to find a, like a, an area to go to, in which Nafumi doesn't really know anything about that, but decides to just walk in a simple direction. Maybe, just maybe they'll stumble across a place that they can find some people that are good people. He continues to just walk and walk and walk until he comes across a village. A village that he doesn't know anybody there, but he approaches them and asks them for a place of shelter and says that they have no food and that he's been basically just carrying this little girl all the way over here. They say it's completely fine. And they look at them to see that they're demi-humans, and they ask about it. Oh, so you two are demi-humans. That's nice. Um, uh, this isn't the best place for demi-humans, though. Melwarmark, it basically enslaves all of them. I know, I can tell. Do you know a place where there aren't slave enslaved demi-humans? Oh, yes, definitely. If you just go up to the north, there's Shield Freedon. Shield Freedon's really nice. And you can go further deep as well, and you can find Silvelt. Those two places riddled with demi-humans. That's their, more or less, everybody there is demi-humans and beast people. Perfect. I appreciate that. Um, we'll be going there in the morning. Well, you know what? Let me, uh, I'll give you some supplies for the morning. How about that? Oh, thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. Now Fumi then goes to sleep with Rotalia, and when they wake up, after they awaken, the village gives them some supplies and tells them that they need to get going right now. They've been hearing through the grapevine about his escape, and they don't want to rat him out at all, but they also don't want him to be here and them get hurt along with, obviously, him as well. 
And of course, Nafumi understands this, says they have to look out for their own, and he promises he's getting out right now. So Nafumi and Rautalia leave and begin to head through a forest, and they begin speaking about him being one of the cardinal heroes. He doesn't really see himself that way. He's been rejected immediately and has been in prison for about a week or so now, so he doesn't think he's actually one of the cardinal heroes. But Rautalia thinks otherwise, asking to join his party. But he's confused, isn't she kind of already joined his party? Like, he kind of got her out, or she got him out. And she explains basically what's going on, and at least how the system works, sort of. And he's able to add her to his party. But he sees all these leveling systems and all that. Yeah, he saw it before, but frankly, he didn't really know what it even meant. But he sees a lot of capabilities he does have, but a lot he doesn't have. A lot of the stuff he does, he does have are just basic, basic, very basic things like slightly enhanced strength and stuff like that and slightly enhanced like agility, durability, but nothing crazy by any means. He's level one. He hasn't trained at all, hasn't leveled up at all, and all of his stuff that he basically had in his home world, all of his capabilities from from blood, from basically this blood manipulation, blood sense, camouflage, changing into animals, controlling animals, anything he could have done, he can't do right now. So he begins to think that it is the best course of action getting out of Melramark so they won't get hunted down and then maybe he can start leveling up. And with Raftalia as his partner as well, maybe he can start building a crew. Maybe he'll start building a team and they'll go about whatever they have to do to survive. Finally, they arrive near outside the border of Shield Frieden, but they do come across a house before then. And it seems like someone is what, or is a demi-human. There's a nobleman there by the name of Van Richnot who introduces himself, asking him if he's Naofumi, the person that broke free of the Melramark or the kingdom's uh, prison, in which he asks if he's going to turn him back in, but he shakes his head and says no, that he's actually going to help him out. He shows a bunch, a bunch of like these horses or and some filolios that will basically carry him in a cart, this carriage, and that he personally will bring him over to Shield Frieden in which Naofumi doesn't even know what to say, and thanks him as he is kind of forced in this fact to trust him anyways, but luckily Van Richna is a nice guy, eventually arriving at Shield Frieden. When he arrives, there is some noblemen waiting for him and they greet him, especially greet Raftalia as well, knowing that she is a demi-human herself. But Naofumi has a ton of questions. For one, how the heck did a little girl get out of slavery? And also, what the heck is going on? That he's not technically part of this world. In which they start explaining everything about the world, or at least everything they personally know. And the noblemen and the people that are educated know a decent amount. Obviously, they've lived here, but the whole leveling system is a little skewered for them. But they do know more or less the ins and outs of kind of everything. So he learns a lot, and when I mean a lot, a lot. He learns about all the leveling systems, he learns about everything he possibly needs, at least for now, and he also learns more and more about Rothalia and her race, and about how she basically levels up. But he goes back to Rothalia once again and asks her how she escaped. She begins to explain that she was sold off once again, and she was kind of sick, and the person actually decided to cure her sickness. She's not so sure who it was, but cured her sickness and then she just woke up one day and he wasn't there anymore, gone, abandoned her, but she was able to actually leave. It's odd, it's as if they just wanted to see me healthy again and then they just left. I don't even really know how the person looks, they were kind of shrouded in a cloak. Oh, I see, that's interesting. I mean, I hope they're a good person, it seems like they are since they saved you. But I guess we can't really think too much about that, huh? Now Fumi then explains what he needs. He's, he begins to explain that he just needs some money. He needs to figure out how to how how to basically just get some gear, stuff like that. Obviously, from what they've heard, and they say since he is kind of like a demi-human in a way, they'll provide him with whatever he, whatever he needs as long as he can protect them from the waves. He agrees, but asks for more of an explanation. Of course, he does know about the waves. But he doesn't know the ins and outs of the waves and exactly what's happening, so they tell him exactly what it is. These waves, a catastrophe that send monster after monster, they need help with that. So Nafumi says that's really no problem. He'll handle it. He'll figure out everything. He's kind of built for this, in a way, in his world. 
he keeps a slim, obviously a slim, basically explanation of it. But in his world, he basically controlled a region, a continent. He doesn't really know. He basically controlled armies, so this shouldn't be too difficult. And after they hear this, they're really they feel really good about it, and they decide to actually show show him some people that they have to actually work for him. And he decides that he'll just take maybe one or two, but. After seeing who's there, he actually decides against it, saying that he doesn't want to put anybody else in harm's way because he has an idea. He asks if they have any monsters, and they say of course, uh, like of course they do, but a lot of them are kind of insane now because they got him back from slavery and they've been kind of chained down and they're trying to get him back into at least a right mindset. In which Naofumi says that that's fine, that he can actually get in their heads as long as he's trained and levels up quickly. He needs a place to train, level up right now. In which they give him the place, so they get weapons for Raltalia and armor for him and armor for Raltalia as well, and they begin their leveling up. With already one week that has passed, they have very little time to do things. More like maybe three and a half weeks at most. So he's leveling up as fast as possible, and as he levels up from level five to level 10 to level 15 to level 20, he starts gaining all of his abilities slowly but surely back. His transformation abilities, his agility, combat, durability, uh, endurance, mind, regeneration, senses, all of that are starting to increase once again. Of course, he is kind of immortal, but that doesn't mean he can't take damage, so this is pretty beneficial for him. He continues throughout his levels to gain more and more, basically, of his all of his abilities. These are perfect. His claws are back, his fangs, his retractable, retractable fangs, a powerful bite, everything he could think of. And not only that, his ability to transform others into vampires. Now this is something he's been waiting for and glad that he has it back. At a level of 30 with 5 days left before the wave, Rothalia has actually grown up quite a bit. Rothalia, obviously Naofumi is slightly higher than her, but he's at level 30, she's at level 25. But she has grown up. It seems that demi humans grow up at a rapid rate when they level up. In which he's heard about but didn't know this is how it worked. She basically looks like a young woman now. He's kind of shocked to see this. But she, he does explain that there are some things that he wants to speak about. They could, theoretically, make her a vampire. And that would give her a decent amount of strength. But there are some side effects. And those side effects are pretty pretty wearing. The fact that she will be weaker in the sun. Now Fumi doesn't really have this problem because he's been a vampire for so long. But for her, it would be a little bit different. There will be basically his strength will or her strength will increase at night, which is definitely beneficial. But also some other things that maybe now Fumi wouldn't even know about that she might gain some powers that he won't even be able to give her insight on, especially because he was a vampire or a human that turned into a vampire. She's a demi-human that will turn into a vampire. In which she's shocked to hear this, but even with that said, she says that she wants to be one. And he tries to confirm with her, are you sure? Like 100%? She nods. So now Fumi walks up to her and says that he has to bite her on the neck. And she nods and basically gets ready for the bite. But when he does bite her, it doesn't hurt at all. And Naofumi is surprised that she's not even flinching at this, and he realizes that a skill was unlocked. It seems when he transforms a party member, or someone in his party, into a vampire, they don't feel the, the anguish, anything that he would have gone through when he turned into a vampire initially. In which Naofumi is pretty actually happy about this because he didn't want to see her freak out and get all antsy and mad about being hurt, but she's fine. She grows her fangs, her claws begin to slightly extend, and her power skyrockets. It seems like she's having a lot, a lot of ability enhancements, and her level stays the same. But her base stats multiply by about 1.5 times. She is extremely strong, and now Fumi begins to believe that their connection might actually be a reason for this. A vampire normally, at least for him, he was turning people into vampires without their permission. That's why a lot of them would die. 
with a party member that is blatantly saying that she would want to or he would want to be a vampire might get a giant boost especially in this world because it's volun is voluntary now that is something to think about now fumi begins to think that maybe he should add more and more people but before that he doesn't want to spread himself too thin deciding that he'll actually just grab one of the monsters that are kind of berserk and he comes up to one of them and sees that it's a wolf monster it's this wolf and he questions if he'll even be able to control it because obviously it's very similar to a werewolf or something that would be in his other world but he decides that he's going to try nonetheless he approaches it and reaches out his hand and asks the, the wolf to please calm down you can protect your family I personally can help you. I just need you to calm down, okay? Listen to my voice. I know the pain you're going through. I know what's going on in your mind. You felt abandoned. You felt that everyone betrayed you. I was sent to this world and immediately was thrown in prison. I know how it feels. I do. I promise. Now Fumi slowly but surely puts his hand on the wolf's head and the wolf begins to calm down sits down and begins to change what the hell's going on Rotalia begins to explain that these beast people that's their transformed state and he hasn't gone out of that transformed state in they don't know how long but it seems like he is as well he transforms back into basically a demi-human he looks like a normal human but he just has the ability to transform into a wolf now that is something having someone like you on my team would definitely be different. The man that just turned back into a man, obviously, begins to question why, and he explains that, well, vampires and wolves didn't or don't get along in his world, but he is full cap fully capable of getting along with him, in which he a now Fumi asks his name. Oh, yeah, my name. It's, I don't even know. What is my name? Rotalia is confused. You don't know your name. How do you not know your name? It must be a side effect. I mean, he's been kind of out of it for a while. Can you think of any good names? Hmm. I don't know, to be honest. What would be a good name for you? Do you have any idea what you would want to be called? The man then begins to speak and can hear the echoes around him, overwhelming him. And he decides, just call me Echo. That's fine. I know it seems simple, it's just the voice echo, but that sounds about right. I think that would be a fine name for me. Hey, if it suits you, it suits you. I like it, actually. So I hope you're ready. We're fighting a wave, the wave of catastrophe, pretty soon. You up for it, or you want to sit out? He smiles and says that he, he's damn well up for it, and they'll take the next three days to train. Get him accustomed to basically be back in the limelight, basically be back to fight. And once they're done, they'll take a break, get some supplies, and get ready for the fight. Now Fumi, Rotalia, and now Echo, they begin to train up for those three days. They get stuff ready, and they begin to speak with the nobles about their plans for the next wave. And they begin to explain that their waves are a little weird, especially with, with the separation from Siltvelt. And he questions why they would separate from them. They're the same people. Do they have m political disputes? Yes, we have political disputes. Unfortunately, we don't see eye to eye half the time. I see. But here's the thing. You guys all want to fight the waves. That's what you guys should be bonding on. Trying to defeat these things. So I do recommend we try to stick with Siltvelt. But if you can't connect back with them, I am loyal to you. You did help me out. But I do recommend this. I would hope you would consider it. The noblemen then say, for a hero, they'll definitely try and they'll reach out and even speak about himself and speak about Naofumi being there and helping protect Shield Frieden. And they'll, t and they'll tell Silvelt that he can help, that they'll help together and if they join back together, that the hero can protect both of them. Yes, 100%. I'll help both you guys. I really don't mind. We just need to get that thing squashed, figured out. Okay, we need to join these countries together. I know and I'm sure there's some foul things going on. Melramark doesn't like me very much and I'm sure you guys don't like Melramark very much. 
I assumed the heroes weren't supposed to be summoned in all at once by one country. Yes, you got that right. We don't like them very much, but the Queen has come by and speak with us. But even that really hasn't fi the, fixed the relationship. We are hurting pretty badly at the moment. I hope you can save us now, Fumi. Trust me, me and my party can. You don't have to worry. Thank you. Now Fumi and his party ready for this first wave. They wait for it, and as the, the sky begins to turn this purple color, now Fumi and Raftalia, they feel a giant jump in their, their stats. Now Fumi smiles and begins to think that this thing, it must be magical, dark arts, or may, it might resemble something like a nighttime. And during night times, they are a lot stronger and basically they have a lot more freedom. But this is not just a nighttime thing. This doesn't feel like them, it's because it's nighttime. It feels like it's even stronger than that. The fact that the wave begun and they've gotten this massive advantage now. And let's just say they begin to tear through the wave. Now Fumi is slicing with his talons on his, on his hands or his long nails, slicing through every single monster he can see until he finds the boss monster. It's a giant dragon. This giant dragon begins to breathe fire at Naofumi and he dodges with ease as Raftalia closes the distance, slicing at the dragon's stomach and Naofumi slices at its neck. On top of that, Echo goes charging forward, changing into his wolf form as he howls like crazy. The echoes can be heard all around. He slams his body into the stomach of the dragon, forcing it back to the ground and, and making it fall on its back. Now Fumi slices a hole through both of the wings and Rotalia slices the head off the dragon, killing it. Now Fumi smiles and thinks that this teamwork will definitely get them through the waves. It seems like their power definitely accelerated at that, but, but even with higher power, it doesn't mean the waves will get easier. They don't know how strong the waves could get or could not get. But now that they have a full month before the next one, it will definitely be, be beneficial. After the first wave, Nafumi and his party, not only they level up, but they also started traveling village to village, helping people the most they possibly could. But the only problem is that there isn't that much conflict over here. He actually realizes that there's not much conflict at all at Shield Frieden. There's a little things, like very small things, like maybe monsters that were hiding in, um, after the wave. But things like that are so basic that he can defeat them like nothing. He feels very prepared for this next wave especially. But maybe some other of the villages have some struggles. But during this, he decides that maybe it would be for the best to head up to or head up to Siltvelt. He begins to spot or talk with the noblemen, and they say that's a great idea. That he can actually go take a couple of their people as well and speak with the people at Siltvelt. They try to reach out and actually spoke with them a little bit, but haven't really gotten to a complete conclusion. So me maybe meeting Nafumi is something they need. So he does just that. He heads up to Siltvelt with Echo and Raftalia, and when they arrive, they're actually greeted by a ton, a ton of demi-humans, and they begin speaking about the current state of their world. And they talk about their country, about how they kind of were separated from Shield Frieden, and that they're not on good terms. But if he thinks that it would be very beneficial to get them back on good terms, they'll definitely try their best. But with that said, political things are kind of out of the reach of the heroes. In which Nafumi agrees, saying that he doesn't know much about their political stance in terms of all of this, so he won't be butting into that. But there is one thing he does know, and that's keeping people safe. Nafumi believes that with both of these countries under his wing, especially with in terms of war and an army, it will be definitely beneficial. He even brings up some of his powers, saying that he is kind of like them, very similar to them actually, but in this fact he's a vampire someone that can actually turn others into vampires as well. In which they're kind of confused, but Rotalia right in front of them changes into a bat and then changes back into her normal form. They look at her closely and realize that she is a vampire. That this demi-human changed into a vampire? They're not sure how to feel about this, but she says that they did this for the sake of, of them, to protect them, 
to make sure they are safe. Now Fumi agrees to this, and Echo even says this statement as well, turning into his wolf form, telling them straight up how it is and how exactly they saved him, and that they helped them or helped him greatly get away from his madness, the madness that he had in his own head after all of the trauma he went through. So the people of Silvelt eventually start agreeing, believing in Naofumi, and thinking that since the shield hero won't arrive or won't be coming because of whatever occurred, well, they can put their trust into Naofumi. They begin to question this whole vamp vampiric thing and changing people into vampires. He explains that their connection most likely has something to do with it. He explains that since Raftalia actually saved him, helped him out, and they had a good bond, changing into her into a vampire was very easy. But let's but he gives an example. But let's say I basically make you a vampire and you don't want to be, you could go through extreme painful withdrawals and then on top of that, you could die. So it all based it's all based on if you want to become a vampire. They're all shocked to hear this, but they question if Nafumi will do that, force them, but he cuts them off. It's not what I'm here for. Frankly, in my other world, I tried that before. Didn't work very well. So I have no plans of forcing you to be a vampire. Frankly, this world isn't exactly my own playground, you could say. I don't have any plans of doing anything too drastic at the moment. But at least for now, I don't want anything to do with Melromark. I don't like them at all. I don't think they have the right mindset to actually survive these waves. And Silvel agrees, saying that Melramark has done some really bad things now, and even their own people are enslaved there, in which Naofumi says that that is one of his first goals, free all of the slaves that are basically in Melramark, but more specifically all the people that are involved in Ch Silvelt and Schildfrieden, get them back to their actual homes, in which they're happy to hear, but that is definitely a mission. It's one that maybe Naofumi will have a lot of backlash coming from the other heroes. Slavery is technically legal, and they don't know how exactly the other heroes are acting. They, they heard that the first wave was easy, for at least for them, but they heard that the first wave was easy for Naofumi as well. Naofumi nods as the noblemen of Silvel continue explaining. But also, we've heard some really bad things at Melramark. Villages, everything. It seems to be crumbling at the at, every, at their fingertips. It seems the heroes are doing more harm than good, and they're not even going back to help. Ah, uh, we're not sure, but we don't care for Mel Remark, but we also don't want to see people just die for no reason. I see. I mean, I could go over there and try to handle things, but even you know that's a dangerous, dangerous task. If I have people, though, that are very strong, maybe worthy of being in my party, do you have any of those? They then not, saying that they have a ton of military units, their military is arguably one of the strongest. Silvelt may have demi-humans, and demi-humans may, may be seen as cute and cuddly, but those warrior demi-humans are extremely strong. Unfortunately, they did lose one of their warrior demi-humans a long time ago, and that she has not been seen since, but they have multiple others that are extremely powerful as well. Now Fumi nods toward this and sees as multiple people begin to funnel out and begin to introduce themselves. But just as they're doing this, a light appears over the top of the capital of Silvelt, slamming into the capital, at least the building. Now Fumi points towards it and asks what the hell just happened, and they say they have no idea. They run over to see that there's a demi-human in there. Rotalia seeing this demi-human is shocked. Kill? Is that you? Now Fumi looks at Rotalia and is confused and asks how the heck do they does she know know them? And well she explains that they're childhood friends. But it's odd. How how did they get out? How did you get out, Kiel? Kiel stands up and looks toward Rotalia and smiles, saying that he escaped a while ago and he just got back right now. But once he entered the borders of Silvelt, everything began to change. He began to feel this power rush to him, and he was summoned back toward the capital of Silvelt, and then now he's here. Now Fumi then points. Look at his arm. Is that a shield on his arm? Now Fumi points it out, and it is. 
everybody in Siltvelt begins to freak out and panic, saying that there's no way. He's the shield, shield hero? How is that possible? In which Naofumi learns of these other weapons. They're kind of like vassal weapons. They're in a way chosen or they ch get chosen to other people. But the shield is normally one that is based on a summoning. Not a vassal weapon that would be just chosen. Naofumi just not. Interesting. I guess you do have a hero now, Silvo. But the real question is, how strong are you? Kiel stands up and doesn't really know what to say. Raftalia looks at her in complete shock. Is that even possible? A demi-human has the shield, the legendary shield hero. Everyone begins to chant and begins to approach him. Nafumi smiles, get her ready to protect Siltvelt. She'll need to be able to do so in my absence, including Shield Frieden. I'm sure they'll find a way for you to get some party members. Some good ones. Don't worry about it. What about you, Rautalia? You look like you know this person. Your friends? Rautalia nods, and Nafumi is about to offer her to just go with, with obviously, with Kiel, but she refuses immediately. But you said they were that she's your friend. Why wouldn't you want to go with them? Because... Um, you're you're the hero. You're the hero I want to be with, Nafumi. Not not Kiel. But Kiel is a friend of mine. Don't get it wrong, but still. Like you said, we have a bond, right? Nafumi kind of smiles and laughs at this and and nods. Thanks for everything. Nafumi leaves with his party and waves goodbye to Kiel and Rotalia says her goodbyes as well and they promise to meet up once again. And Kiel questions why he can't go with them as well, but they quickly explain to him, explain to her that with the shield, that more or less you can't be together to level up, and that they can fight during the waves, just not when they're training. And frankly, Nafumi and his party need to level up as well. He leaves, and during this time, they begin their leveling up process once again on their journey to Melromark. And while they're outside the borders of Shield Frieden, now Fumi looks at the levels of his two party members, seeing that Raftalia is almost at level 40 and Echo is about to be at level 38. It seems like when they're basically going to come back, they'll be able to get their class upgrades and they'll see from there in terms of how strong they actually get. Now Fumi leaves as he gets some supplies from Shield Frieden and instead of just going straight toward the problems that he at least heard about, he actually makes a stop. He makes a stop at Van Richnot's house, and he begins to speak with them about anything he can figure out. And the first thing he learns about is someone by the name of Rabier. And frankly, Rotalia knows exactly who this is. They begin to talk about this person, and that this person is a horrible, horrible person. So, they decide to make a move. Now, Fumi explains something to them. Look, we can overthrow this person. But me, of, of course, in my other world, I know how it is when you take someone out of power. Everything, and when I say everything, everything shuts down. Someone needs to be able to take that place of power. Do you have someone in mind, Mr. Van Richnot? Van Richnot nods and says that he can. That he can take the place of Rabier, and that they can make a better, well, place in general. In which, now Fumi is happy to hear this, but questions if that will actually work. He is a demi-human, and frankly, wouldn't there be some conflicts? And he shakes his head, saying that with Nafumi there, and at least speaking on his behalf, saying that he agrees with this formality, it should be okay. Plus, there are demi-humans that are extremely capable, and this should hopefully start the mix of everything there. So Nafumi, Rautalia, and Echo decide to head off, even bringing Rabe even bringing uh, Van Rishnot to the kingdom that Rabier controls. When Nafumi arrives though, he's arrived and are confronted with guards. The guards are basically just avoided relatively easily as Nafumi says he wants to speak with Mr. Rabier. When he approaches him, Rabier can sense this intent of Nafumi. Nafumi explains that it's time for him to get out of here, to not be in power anymore. Rabier asks why, but Nafumi says that he knows the answer, that it's pretty obvious, 
that he's been enslaving people for a while now. He's addicted to torture, and he even has one of the victims right next to him. Raltalia looks at him, and frankly, the look of Raltalia cannot even be recognized. Rabier doesn't even recognize Raltalia, the changes she's gone through, not only because of levels and her growing into a woman, but also being part vampire. She's like a whole different person now. But she still has her morals and doesn't necessarily want to kill him. Now Fumiyu approaches him and puts his talons or his nails to his neck and says that he could kill him right now or he can throw him in prison. Either way, he doesn't mind and that someone else will be taking over. Demi-humans begin to flood the area and basically a siege begins. It seems like no one else is able to back exactly what's going on and they're able to take it over without much pushback. Now Fumi explains that they might get pushback from the Melromar Kingdom. That this is a kingdom and they probably have connections with them. It's blatantly obvious. But even with that said, you could make the argument that if they just keep a low profile, at least for now, take things slowly, take care of things in this kingdom, or at least the territory that was once Rabier's, everything should fall into place. Now Fumi says, says this with really high confidence and says that he's going to be heading to the Melramar Kingdom. He wants to speak with some of the royalty. More specifically, he wants to speak with the queen. He's heard about her about this woman that has been going around apologizing to different countries but she wants or he wants to personally talk with her but unfortunately van richnot ends up telling him that she's not in in which he he shrugs and says he'll talk to somebody and he'll figure it out as he goes he heads off with his party running into multiple villages let's just say there's a lot of problems that are going around there's one village he runs into that has overgrown plants monstrous plants but there's one problem everything in that village is torn to shreds he feels there's no reason to even stay there anymore whoever or whatever happened in this village well let's just say they're all dead he heads up once more to this other village he sees just dead bodies everywhere he can smell it the undead right above them is that a dragon? He immediately goes up with Rotalia and Echo, and they begin to chop up th that said dragon. He realizes that it would have been an undead dragon. Maybe it wouldn't even it would have even came back to life, but he was able to manipulate it to the fact that it didn't. He could have maybe just maybe brought it to life in terms of himself, controlling it with the dark arts, and maybe even manipulating it so it would be part of his party. But there was no reason to even risk that. He risks if he risks that, gives it, or let's just say a power boost, and it turns on them, they'll be sitting in a bad spot. So they, he decided to just take the easy way out, or at least the safer way for his party, to kill it. And after handling some business, various business, he wonders what type of heroes allowed this to happen. So he heads over to the Melramark Kingdom, and on the way there, he spots a little girl. This little girl runs over to him and asks, Can you please accompany me to the capital? I kind of got lost. Now Fumi says that this is just fine. He asks Echo to change into his wolf form and he bows down so that she can get on his back. And he begins to ask her questions. So, the kingdom, how are they? Oh, um, they're good, I guess. Why are you asking me? I just want to know how the three heroes are, really. I hope they're doing well. I hope they're not being dumb. But frankly, there's no guarantee on that, huh? I don't know, really. I don't know them at all. But from what it seems like around your kingdom, it seems like they haven't done their job very well. Melty is shocked to hear this. You know who I am? Yeah, I do. I've been with the other countries, or at least Silvelt and Shield Frieden. I know who you are, I know who your mother is, and that's who I came to speak with. Unfortunately, I know she's not here, but still, I'm glad I met you first. You seem kind of down to earth, but I'm afraid that your kingdom is falling apart, and it's happening quickly. She gets serious, actually for the first time since they met, at least after a couple hours, and Melty says that she knows. She knows what's happening, and she can't stop it, at least not right now, she's not in the power 
position to do so. And now Fumi says that he knows. He's not blaming her by any means. He just wishes things weren't going to be this way. But it has to have something to do with it. What What is going on that is putting them in this, this situation? He feels like maybe they're too reliant on the heroes. Maybe the heroes are that messed up and sadistic or something. But she shakes her head. No, that, that can't be it. Do you have something else? I've heard rumors about this. A church? A religion, right? That that basically celebrates three heroes? And she nods. But asks, why would that even matter? Well, here's the thing. Religion is something interesting. And I found this out a long time ago. Religion is for the people that want something to believe in. But mainly, what I believe and what I've seen, at least in my world, religion is for the weak. Religion is made for someone, something, a large group of people that are terrified. They use religion to control others. And that's what I assume is happening. Now Fumi continues to walk as they enter the capital. And when they do, everyone seems to be on high alert, staring at Naofumi. He's finally arrived at the kingdom that he escaped from. He was abandoned here. They threw him out like garbage, but that's not his point at this point. He just wants to figure these things out. He needs to know what the hell these other heroes are doing. The three heroes approach him and point their weapons toward him and tell him not to move. Interesting that you have your weapons pointed at me. I feel like I'd be the last person that you'd point your weapons at. I am one of you. I am one of the heroes. But believe me or not, I don't really care. Now, I have some questions. And I'll make this quick. Dead dragon on the mountain. Who did that? Ren raises his sword and tells him that yes, he should fear him that he killed that dragon. Not what I fear. You killed a whole village. The disease overrided them and killed them all. Giant monster with uh, that plant. The plant or some sort like that? I saw that on the way over here. Who did that? Multiyasu raises his spear and says that he did that. He saved them from famine. But then he realizes what Nafumi said. Really? Well, you killed that whole village too. Mr. Bowhero, I don't know what you did. Sure, you did something messed up as well, or I can hope that you're better. But frankly, with two idiots beside you, I don't think you are. But Itsuki brings up that he started a revolution, helping a, a neighboring place, and that they are in such better hands now. Better hands? Don't tell me you took someone out of power. Who did you put in power? He then says that he put another government in power. Yeah, that's another mess I'm going to have to clean up. How much you want to bet there's a refugee camp two miles south? Now this is something I didn't, at least didn't want to believe. Alright. You three are literally useless. I'm glad I stopped by, at least now I know. Just as he says this, guards surround them, or surround him, and they point their weapons at him. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I just wouldn't. It's not the best idea. These guards are practically nothing. My party members, even though there's only two of them, could drop them like it's nothing. But, the real question is, you guys are really surrounding me, putting the little princess in danger. The only person that actually has common sense. Interesting. So this is what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna do this really quick. With time ticking down and the wave coming very soon, I need to get out of here. But I'm also not going to leave the princess in your guys' not capable hands. So, I'm going to be taking her. You guys can try to chase me. I will kill you. It's that simple. How about it? They then disagree, but now Fumi frankly does not care. Telling Echo to get her out of here right now. He throws her back on the on his back and takes off at insane speeds. Now Fumi and Rautalia changing into a bat and flying off like basically like banshees, just just bouncing out as quick as possible. And they're gone without a trace. Frankly, they have no chance of keeping up, and Melty questions what they're doing, and now Fumi begins to tell her telepathically. And she's, for one, shocked to know that he can do this. 
but also pretty impressed. He explains that she is going to be with her mother because frankly he can tell that there's something very underhanded going on and he assumes that there is some corruption. He hasn't even met the king and he assumes that there is some bad, bad corruption, at least in terms of the church. Melty says that can't be, that, that they wouldn't do that. Look, I know it's hard to believe. That's your family. But at the same time, I look at things objectively. And that's what I'm seeing. These people, they're out to kill you. You're the only one that actually has a level head. And all this other corruption, I assume they're not so smart. It's just a matter of time. She then begins to think, Would my sister really do that to me? Would she? And he asks who she is, and she goes by the name of Malti, or the adventurer name, mine. Oh, I've heard of her. Okay, that does make sense. I wasn't sure if that was your sister, but that does make sense. There's some rumors we've heard about her. No rumor is completely solid in truth, but there's always some truth in every rumor. Keep that in mind, Miss Melty. I'm just here to protect you. At the end of the day, I have no reason to kill you. They then take off, and luckily they're actually, they escape to shield Frieden without even any hurtful things happening, bringing Melty to safety as they get information about where the queen is. Now Fumi, after hearing this, takes Melty himself straight to the queen. During this sequence, he's able to bring her there, and the, the conversation with the queen is pretty brief but an important one. He asks about the Three Hero Church, and she basically puts up exactly what her shadows have told them, and he hears about everything, that they're not good, they're looking for trouble, and they want to take over everything. But she personally cannot do anything at this moment. She just can't. She is stuck basically doing political correctness at this point, and trying to help her kingdom not get buried into the ground. Look. All due respect, your kingdom's getting buried already. It doesn't matter if you're doing this or not. I can speak with the other kingdoms. Who do you have left? She explains that she actually doesn't have that many left at this point. Only one more. She explains that Shield Frieden is actually the last place that she needs to stop. Oh, that's perfect. You're fine. Trust me. I've been to Shield Frieden. Actually, I've been protecting them. Don't worry. Your graces are fine over there. I'll speak with them after the wave. You need to get back to your kingdom. Actually, scratch that. You need to fix your kingdom. And frankly, maybe you should stay here until after the wave. Then we need to do something about this Three Heroes Church. But I also don't want you dying because of it. Let me know when you're ready to go. And I'll be the one to take you there. And we can handle anything that comes about. Trust me on that. She nods and thanks him and apologizes for the treatment that he's been gone he's gone through, but he shakes his head. No reason for apologizing. It's a little too late. It's not your fault though. Um, but I'm just living my life now. I have some things I want to do, some people I want to save, and this world is interesting, different than mine. Seems like I had the wrong idea when I was in my other world. Maybe to a certain extent at least. I'll see you later, Miss Queen. He then leaves and heads back to Shield Frieden, speaking with them about exactly what happened, and then speaks about the wave. The wave is due in 72 hours, so they'll take the rest of that time to train, level up, and get ready. And let's just say being ready is an understatement. They get their class upgrades, they get a bunch of stuff that they'll need for the wave, they even speak with people at, at Silvelt about to, or to see how well Kiel is doing, hearing that she is having some fruitful training, especially with the people that she has there. He finds this to be really good and asks them to stay in communication just in case, that if they need help, he'll be over immediately. Now Fumi, Rotalia, and also Echo are ready for the second wave. And as the, the sky begins to, the, to change, they all begin to feel their powers increase exponentially. They knew this would happen again, but this is crazy. Now Fumi at almost a level of 70, Rotalia at a level of about 50, and so is Echo. Their power has skyrocketed, and at least their base stats have. 
and they can feel the power within them. And let's just say this wave, this wave of soul eaters, this wave of dark magic like people, ghosts alike, a flying Dutchman is nothing. They just claw their way through it. But just as the wave finishes up, something else occurs. Something that Naofumi was not expecting. A person. A person that looked very similar to the other heroes. The other, well, cardinal heroes arrives. And he has a scythe. A scythe in one hand and ready for a fight. Landing on the ship in front of Naofumi. And Naofumi stares daggers to him. Hey kiddo, I've heard about you. A lone hero on his own. But I've heard you're strong. Let's see what you got. Nafumi stares at the man and asks, So who are you? You're not a monster. It's pretty obvious. By the look of your weapon, you're something different. Now what are you exactly? Isn't it simple, kiddo? I am, am a cardinal hero, you could say. A vassal weapon user. But obviously I don't come from here. Why would I be fighting you? I'm from a new world, a different one. And unfortunately, sorry kiddo, you're gonna have to die. Nafumi smiles and basically taunts the man. Okay, let's see what you got, old man. And that is a wrap for this part of what if Nafumi was the legendary vampire hero. It's a little different. I started it a little different added some various different things i know some of you were calling for different stories i mean some of you hate it some of you like it i've been trying to give the best of both worlds kind of give and take some are going to be far different like i had one where he started in silt Velt, and i've had stuff where like the story is not a hundred percent concrete and exactly the same um i try to do a little bit of a mixture i can't give you full one side or full the other there's a lot of people that are going to disagree frankly I don't really mind it, but I just want to put that out there. But I hope you all enjoyed. I hope all y'all have an amazing day. And that's about it. Make sure to leave a like, sub, comment down below. And I hope all y'all have a great day. Later. The Scythe Hero stands in front of Nafumi. One of his hardest challenges to date. Or at least that's what it seems at this moment. So when the fight begins, he begins to feel some pushback. Some pushback against this hero by the name of Lark. Lark begins to put Nafumi on the back foot because he wasn't sure what to expect. But now that Nafumi sees his entire kit and what he is made of, Nafumi knows exactly how to defeat him. Echo comes out of nowhere, jumping on Lark as his scythe begins to swing at Echo, basically ready to kill him. Nafumi hits the scythe straight up, allowing Rotalia to cut her hand right through, well, Lark's chest. Immediately after this, Nafumi comes over to capitalize upon this, picking Lark up and flying him straight up into the air, and even Lark is beginning to freak out. Nafumi begins to slice his way into his stomach, and doing this, he injects him with something odd. This poison? Well, Nafumi has had various new skills, and this was one of them. He injects a poison into Lark as he comes crashing back down. This gives them the upper hand. This poison makes everything seem terrifying. Lark begins to look around and having to defend himself against various other monsters, at least that's what he thinks in his own head. Doing such a thing leaves multiple openings and it allows them to basically defeat Lark with relative ease and they're pressing the boot of their feet on his neck. Maybe not literally, but figuratively. Frankly, they have the fight won, and they begin to question Lark more and more, asking if he really thought that they would they would die to him. But on top of that, he really thought it would be that easy to kill them. Well, unfortunately, that's just wrong. Rotalia walks over and proceeds to slice off the head of Lark as his body is just dead, gone. He gets kicked off of where they're, they're currently standing, and Nafumi watches as the, his body crashes to the ground, picking up the head of Lark and walking it off to back toward, well, the main area of Shield Frieden, or the capital. 
hanging it up on a pole and sticking it into the ground, saying and telling them that these heroes, so-called heroes from another world, are here to kill them, kill the people here, and allow them to all die. But Naofumi won't allow that. Naofumi is going to make sure that all of them are protected. Everyone begins to cheer as they burn Lark's head at the stake. But during this time, Naofumi looks to his left, seeing that the wave is still going on in Melramark. He wonders what is even happening, but after another couple hours, the wave finally finishes up. But the news of something very, very bad would be accord or will be coordinated to him. He flies over with Rotalia and also Echo to the to where the queen is, hearing of what happened in Melramark, that the other three heroes, they were defeated, beat, extremely bad. Now Fumi hearing this is shocked, but wants to know how the hell that even happened. But she just explains that what that she heard about another person coming from the wave. Now Fumi explains exactly what he went through and that he killed another one that came through the wave. But the other heroes, they couldn't handle it at all. The queen shakes her head and says no, that they couldn't. But luckily for them, they're not dead. At least that's a plus. But the fact that they're down basically for the count, at least for the next week or so, that brings up a lot of problems for Melramark. And honestly, it makes it easier for the church to do something about it. To defeat and kill the other heroes if they so choose. Now, Fumi questions if they'd actually go about killing the other heroes. Would that even be the best idea and course of action? In which the queen says she doesn't even know. But now Fumi gets to the fact that he did say that he would help her. You're right, you're right, okay. So, I have a plan. You willing to hear it? She begins to say yes, and Nafumi says that she really is going to have to think about this one. It's your kingdom, Miss Queen. You need to protect it. I can give you the means to protect it. What do you say? How about it? The Queen's confused and asks what he's talking about. And he says that she, she can join his party, temporarily if she wants, and accept the power of a vampire. That she can become a vampire herself, and they can go over and defeat this little crisis. But she should be the one to, to finish it off. She is the queen of Melramark. Now Fumi says this, and Melty, currently listening in, walks in and says that she doesn't feel like that's the best idea. But now Fumi says that her mother is extremely strong already. Being a vampire, let's just say, would make her untouchable. At least that's what it would feel like in terms of politics. She would just be able to go on for a while, forever, immortal. Now Fumi does turn toward Melty and apologizes, saying that she would have to, or at least um, the queen would have to, you know, make herself step down if she wanted to give Melty the spot. Because when she becomes a vampire, she will be immortal. And the queen doesn't even know what to say, but not sure if she should say yes. Just as they're debating this, Rotalia and Echo show up next to Naofumi, as they are both vampires, or at least part vampire, or Rotalia is, and Echo is kind of in an odd spot, because he can't necessarily be a vampire. But Rotalia says that it has benefited her greatly, and has given her new power and strength, and she can't imagine a queen, royalty, someone as strong as the queen, being able to basically unlock that type of strength, especially with her type of skills. And she reluctantly is, in, is just debating with it, but then realizes that is the best idea. The best idea is to become a vampire herself. Now Fumi shakes her hand and, she need, and reminds her that she needs to convince herself that she wants this. And she says that she does, saying it over and over in her head as now Fumi bites her on the neck and she begins to basically form and change into a vampire without any repercussion. She's actually not hurting, not feeling bad, nothing. She's fine. She convinced herself that she needs this and believes it, in fact, that she does. Melty watches on as her mother grows these small fangs or small sharp teeth and her power raises immensely. She looks at Naofumi and nods, saying that she's ready to go fight for her country 
and end this right now. And now Fumi says, that's a great idea. And teaches exactly how to change into a different form, aka a bat form, and they fly off to where the Pope currently is. When they arrive, they begin to hear the Pope commissioning a plan, talking about a plan to kill the other three heroes. The fact is, they're wounded, hurt. It'd be easy now to basically just take them all down. So that's exactly what he wants to do. As the queen hears this, they perch up on a ledge and they all three are just appeared right in front of the Pope. Echo appears on another ledge to the side and begins to just howl in complete unison and they begin to say that the tyranny that the Pope wants to hold is now over. That his little rule and little stunts is not going to go unnoticed. The queen appears in front of him putting her, her hand on his throat and releasing such a crazy aura that it terrifies the Pope. She slams him to the ground and his followers try to help, but no. Well, there's wolves after wolves, these hounds all around the area that are stopping all the followers from even helping. That's exactly what Echo did. And now Fumi and Rautalia are doing the same thing, stopping anything that would stop the queen from finishing the job. They both, or they all leave the, the little church house or the capital of the church and they just hear one loud smack and a crunch and the body of the Pope gets dragged out not too long after. Everybody is shocked, in complete shock, everybody. And obviously his followers are terrified at the fact that the Pope is dead and they begin to get rounded up by all the knights. But when the news spreads that the Pope and everything was taken down, let's just say the King and Malti were shocked. Shocked to hear that their mother did this with a traitor, with a monster. But the Queen says otherwise, hearing of exactly what happened and that Malti and also the King had the little, were in little cahoots with the church themselves. And now that is treason, a serious problem. She begins to tell them that they have one choice, or two, in fact. They can die, or they can get stripped of their titles, and they'll, they'll go on with more punishment as they go along, in which they feel that this is unfair, but the queen cuts them off once again and says that you abandoned one of the heroes, someone that could have helped us. Now we have three other heroes that are dead weight and are on basically death's door one week of recovery they're supposed to be legendary cardinal heroes and that's it that's the matter of the fact at hand the queen finally back in her kingdom tells everybody in the kingdom about all of that what happened about the three heroes church about now fumi and about the other three heroes being hurt extremely bad and that the king and also the princess or the oldest princess were practically at fault that these two have started something they didn't know that was going to backfire so hard on them like that they wouldn't have done in the first place. But they're no longer royalty. The queen then announces something else. That now Fumi will be allowed in Melramark without crucifixion. That he will not be looked down on. And that he can enter whenever he wants. And he will even be given royalty status. In which now Fumi says that he doesn't even want that. But she says that, it, that it's only right that he will make everything better. Being royalty here and then being able to help other countries is something that the queen normally kind of does. Going out to other countries, speaking on different affairs. But Nafumi can do that now. Nafumi has a means of traveling way faster than her. Has basically the means of power with Rotalia and Echo. And it would just be a lot more beneficial. Nafumi nods and says that's a good idea. But there's a lot of things that need to be cleaned up. Frankly, at the end of the day, there's a lot that is wrong with Melramark. And it starts with the three heroes. And the queen agrees, saying that they're going to shut everything down that is corrupt, and it will start with the three heroes. Right when they wake up, that's exactly what they'll do. A week of recovery passes. 
and the three heroes are called to be spoken to, to the queen. The queen sits there, and they even notice the appearance change. She looks stronger, but more fierce. Her eyes have a different tint, this red tint to them, and she begins to say that there's a little problem. That there's a little problem that they have with one of the other heroes. In which they deny that there's another hero, but now Fumi begins to float down in a bad form sitting down right next to the queen as they begin to say that he cannot be here that he is but she cuts them off explaining everything that just happened while they were out and explaining that now fumi took down one of those people just like glass but took but took down a man by the name of lark and took him down by himself now fumi is that much stronger than than them three heroes but they refuse to believe it they believe that he's somehow cheating, somehow doing something outlandish, but the queen says otherwise. The queen begins to explain that they were basically going to die if they didn't do something about the church. Now Fumi saved their lives, so they have to be grateful for that. The queen makes this very apparent, saying that they will not be getting support if they don't take in now Fumi as one of the heroes. If they continue to act as if now Fumi isn't a hero himself, then there will be serious problems and serious repercussions. Frankly, yeah, maybe she can't physically kill them. Maybe she can't. But still, at the end of the day, there's going to be major problems if they don't accept now Fumi. They begin, they've been getting spoon-fed this information that now Fumi is so bad and now they have someone to hate. But now they're getting this information that he's a good person, that he's been helping others. Where's the proof of that? Just as they say this though, two noblemen from other countries enter the area. They enter the domain inside the castle and begin explaining exactly what nafumi has been doing, protecting Siltvelt and Shield Frieden. After hearing this, they are kind of shocked hearing of their, these other countries and the fact that they didn't even know about them but they finally realize what's going on. Even though their judgment is still clouded, they do realize they're kind of their error in their ways. Not entirely, but sort of. So they say that they will treat Naofumi with the most respect they possibly can and treat him as if he was a hero or is a hero. The queen says that is all she asks and that, that it's good that they're going to treat him in such a way. So after all of that is done and settled, now Fumi begins to say that he needs to head off, he has some business to attend to, and that Raftalia has some business to attend to as well. She looks at him and nods as she appears into a bad form and flies off as well. They ask where she's going, and, and he says that this whole little slave market thing kind of put a bad taste in her mouth, and that she knows exactly where it starts, and she wants to end it herself. So I decided to let her go do that. They're shocked to hear this. Is she that strong that she can do something like that? Now Fumi nods and says that she's extremely strong. And so is the queen. Maybe they should spar the queen and see how far behind they are. They're shocked to hear this. Far behind? There's no way. But what they don't realize is that now Fumi kind of adding the queen to his party, but also giving her the means of being kind of like a vampire, or a vampire, it makes her that much stronger. She's extremely strong. She would actually be able to keep up with one of the heroes, especially because the heroes are they're kind of weak, frankly. But they do realize that they need to get stronger, and that's what they'll be doing over this course of time. But in the meantime, Nafumi has some business to deal with and begins to head off and deal with that said business. He begins to speak with the other countries about various things and about helping other, other countries out as well. But here's the thing. That gets shut down pretty quickly because there's something that gets revealed by the queen and a very, very, very good opportunity. And that is leveling up at a fast and rapid rate. He hears about the Kalmir Archipelago events and actually decides that he's going to head off. But he wants to get Raftalia back so that they can all level up together. She, he, tr he basically reaches out to her telepathically and she says that she handled the business that she wanted to get through and is heading back right now. As Nafumi begins to leave, someone then appears in front of him. Well, who are you? 
I am Vitoria, the queen of the Philolios, or the Philolio queen. I'd actually like to speak with you, Mr. Hero. Now Fumi shrugs and says that he doesn't have much time, but he doesn't mind talking at all, and begins speaking with her. She begins explaining various things. She begins explaining that there's a big, big disconnect in terms of the heroes. If one of them dies, it will make all the waves extremely, extremely strong. And not only that, all of them need to work together if they want to defeat the waves. She does recognize how strong Nafumi is, but that doesn't matter. There will be a cliff to climb, and they need all of the heroes on board to climb that cliff. Nafumi kind of tells her that he's trying to do such a thing, at the end of the day, he's the one that got abandoned, and she tells him that's why he could be the one to make them all connect. She, he nods and basically asks her something, one last thing before he leaves, because he needs to, basically, he's in crunch time at this point. He asks for a spar, and she says that she won't mind doing that at all, entering her human form as they begin to fight. But it's kind of crazy how strong she is, but Nafumi seems to be developing over or more and more throughout the fights, getting stronger and stronger. He just wants to land one crucial blow on her to see if he can actually withstand an attack from her. But it feels like she's not even trying. Like she's not even full power. Of course, Nafumi has some aspects of his, of his kit that he can actually defend against her and stuff like that, but he definitely feels the power difference and even questions how she's so strong, but she says that she's been here a long time. But Nafumi, he is far stronger than she even expected. Way, way stronger. Nafumi takes the compliment, but kind of doesn't even know what to say to it. At the end of the day, he still lost the fight, but she explains how long she's been leveling up and training, and that's why she is so powerful, and that soon him and his party will be that powerful. He even asks her that maybe she would become even more powerful if she became like him, she would be immortal. But she says that that's not something she's necessarily interested, interested in at the moment, but maybe in the near future if it comes to that. Now Fumi nods and begins to leave, turning into his bat form, but before he leaves, Vitoria says that she will transport him to Kalmira, and she'll also transport um, his little friends, or his party members. Doing such such a thing, they arrive before the boat even does, and they're in Kalmira, ready for a really good leveling up session. Now that they're leveling up, training hard, and getting as many levels as possible, Nafumi and his party have skyrocketed in terms of leveling, and have skyrocketed in terms of power. They are on a whole different level, especially because they got there even before the other heroes did. Luckily, the other heroes are training as well, but at the end of the day, how strong are they? How strong will they truly be? Well, let's just say, strong enough to defeat this wave that is about to arrive in Kalmira. Unfortunately, Nafumi doesn't even know about it, but when it occurs, he's far strong enough to handle it. So when it arrives, all of the monsters in the ocean begin to try and kill people on land, but now Fumi's able to fly around or just go around with Raftalia and also Echo, defeating them with relative ease. But just as the main boss is about to try and chop down multiple buildings, some of the other heroes strike it down are, and are actually able to kill it? It seems like the queen and her new attitude toward this has kind of whipped them into shape. He actually looks toward toward the ocean or the water to see that the queen is actually just arriving and that she has a smile on her face seeing that the other heroes are actually keeping up or sort of keeping up they're not extremely strong they're not insanely strong like nafumi is but they actually have gained some decent experience especially with the tips that they actually took from the queen especially with their kind of stupidity they finally listened after a little bit, so let's just say they're just strong enough to defeat the boss together. But after defeating the boss, it's over. Nothing else arrives. Nafumi questions himself and asks if someone else actually did come out of the wave all that time ago when they were extremely hurt. 
they nod and say that they really wanted to fight her once again to see what kind of level they're at, but it seems like there's no arrival of glass. But what they don't know is that there is another person, and that's why the wave hasn't fully closed yet. A beam of light, something that is so piercing and going to have an after effect, strikes Naofumi right through the heart. This holy like beam came from a gem, a gem that was specially crafted to defeat him. It pierces his heart and he can feel himself drifting off. He turns turns to his left on a rooftop as he sees a woman running away as fast as possible, jumping back into the wave. She, he begins to slowly but surely try and to regenerate, but it feels like he can't regenerate. He feels like he he's slipping. He's slipping. He's going to lose his life to this? A holy what? A holy beam? He doesn't know, but he begins to focus more and more, trying to heal himself, but it seems like there's nothing to it. It seems like he can't. Is he no longer immortal? What is even happening? Why can't he... Rothalia runs over and tells him to bite into her neck right now, or something, and he's confused but remembers exactly what she's talking about. Frankly, he can take the blood of someone else, but with Rothalia being part of his party, maybe it's more potent, maybe it will reenact his healing, he does such a thing, and his eyes begin to glow darker and darker red as he does, does just that. And he sees that his wound is slowly closing, and his breath and his breathing is slowly but surely coming back. He's psyched at the fact that he's not, frankly, dead, but that is a problem. It seems like there's some people around, or at least there was, that were trying to take him out, knowing who the threat was. Raftalia says that, he, that she saw the woman, and it must have been one of Glass's or Lark's teammates, that they're going to definitely be a problem in the future. Echo helps Nafumi up, and they kind of struggle him to the feet, or to his feet, because he is still kind of hurting. The Queen helps them off and heads them back to Melremark for him to recover. But during this time, the recovery goes pretty well, but Nafumi also gets a little surprise. Frankly, he kind of needed it after getting struck like that, and being kind of on death's door there, and he gets a surprise with something that Raftalia will like as well. It seems that he has the deed, or basically is now the lord, of Raftalia's old village. A village that may need some work, but a village that can definitely be a home base in Melramark. A real home base in Melramark. He still doesn't feel like, let's just say, royalty. He's far from it and he's never going to be like it, but it's nice to have somewhere that he can call home somewhere that he can recover and somewhere that he can come back to and realize what's going on in this new world. But his goal now is to figure out these people. What are their plans now that one of their own is dead? Do they plan on just trying to kill Naofumi to finish things up or even things out? Or they become, have they become more vengeful in that regard? Or what is it? Naofumi is not sure. But that's just a story for another time. So if you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, sub, comment down below, and leave any suggestions you got for future what ifs. And I hope y'all enjoyed, and I hope all y'all have an amazing day. Later. I don't wanna waste what's left.